All right, so I'm Caitlin Moore. Thank you for joining me um, for this budget webinar today. We're gonna go through budgeting needs and wants. So that would be what should be on a budget and what maybe doesn't need to be on a budget. And then we're gonna talk grocery store budgeting. So a little bit more helpful tools on um, just kind of how to shop at the grocery store and save a little cash and why that would be a good idea. So feel free to jump in with questions. Um, there's three sections to this and at each section ending, I'll definitely open it up for questions. But if you do have questions, um, feel free. But just so you know, you might show up on the video if you do ask a question because it tends to highlight if somebody's talking. But I did spotlight myself, so you guys shouldn't be um, showing up on the video. So we will get this on YouTube and sent out to everyone. So let's get started here. Um, we're talking about budgeting first, so I'm gonna go through this. Um, this has some supplemental handouts that I will send everything to Sarah so she can get it out to you guys. So you guys could use it with your clients or if you are a client, you can use it yourself um, with your pals worker, whatever you need to do. So let's talk, what is a budget? Without reading all of this, a budget is a financial plan for a specific amount of time. That's all we're looking for. And you get to choose the amount of time. So some people like to do it weekly if they get paid weekly. Some people like to do it monthly because a lot of our bills are due monthly. So if we think about rent, utilities, um, it's due on a monthly basis. So a lot of people stick with a monthly budget. That's how I'm going to talk today. But if you needed to make a budget more uh, weekly or biweekly, feel free to do so. That's a budget is a financial plan for a specific period of time. Why is it important to budget? Well, right now, nearly two out of three Americans live paycheck to paycheck. This probably doesn't come as a shock to most people. Um, living paycheck to paycheck would mean by the time you receive another paycheck, you're out of the cash that you had. So every pay period is super important um, because all of it is spent by the time more money comes in. 40% of Americans could not cover a $400 emergency as of today. And what this means is 40% of Americans, and I've seen this statistic a lot higher, I believe about 60 or 70%, um, if they walked out to their car and all of their tires were slashed or popped or, you know, our roadways and here in Lincoln and Nebraska are horrible. So if those, um, if you needed more tires, likely you could not cover that, whether it be in cash or a credit card or, or something like that. Um, so without going into more debt, debt, 40% of Americans simply could not replace their tires today. And then the American Psychological Association, or the APA, recently reported that money remains the number one stressors for at least 72% of Americans. So I think there's a lot of research behind, um, or a lot of statistics behind people not realizing what their stressor is. So there's a lot of contention at home or a lot of anxiety built up. And a lot of people don't realize that it's actually money related because everything we do is money related. Whether we're going to the doctor or going to the grocery store or going out with friends, we have to have money. And oftentimes that builds up the anxiety and we don't know what it is, but it's simply money. Because if we're living paycheck to paycheck, maybe those things are not affordable. So budgeting is key, um, is key in the success of not living paycheck to paycheck, covering emergencies, and even figuring out what your stressor really is. Um, effects of financial stress, there's a lot of research on this, so I'm gonna go over this real quick, but there's a lot of research on stress and if money is the number one stressor for 72 percent of americans you may actually feel some of these effects um, on the body on the mood and on the behavior um, so on our body we have effects like headaches chronic headaches chest pain fatigue stomach upset sleep problems i know for me i lose a lot of sleep um, that's kind of where my anxiety comes out on is sleep um, and we don't often consider um, bodily ailments as a type of stress. I think a lot of people think stress is on our moods, our anxiety, restlessness, irritability, anger, that makes more sense. We're dealing with something stressful, so it comes out that way, but actually it can come out in, in a symptom too, like a headache or stomach upset. A lot of people get ulcers from um, too much stress, so that, that might be the stomach upset. Um, and then on our behavior, a lot of these things go hand in hand. So we can end up with a lot of coping behaviors because of our stress. So overeating or undereating, 
um, anger outbursts, drug, alcohol abuse, tobacco abuse, and social withdrawal. That's actually a behavior. So you pull back from social situations because you can't afford them. So I think this is a lot of what people deal with, especially right now, um, especially early stages of COVID where a lot of jobs were lost or furloughed. Um, people just didn't go out. We weren't allowed to essentially, but we pulled back on the social aspect. Um, but that's not always good. Um, I, I remember um, probably by May, I hadn't seen my best friend who lives two miles away for like two months. And we had a, a Skype um, session one night and it was it was hard. It was hard because I hadn't seen her in a really long time, but to have to do it over Skype was really hard. So that like actually caused me a lot of stress just because I, I didn't get the social um, impact of having her next to me, you know, giving her a hug, having some coffee, things like that. So that can cause a lot of stress when we pull back socially because we, we need people. We were um, made to be known and be known. So we need people around us and our good support systems. So let's talk about budgeting basics. I try to make this as easy as possible, and it's actually going to seem like we blew over it really fast because it's actually um, a pretty step-by-step um, -step process, and it and, and it doesn't have to be as daunting as some people think. So if we're talking about a budget for a certain period of time, we're going to be speaking monthly. And to make a budget, you need a couple things. We're going to be comparing your income, so what's coming in, to your expenses, which is what's going out. So we're talking about in and out. Um, we're gonna understand where our money is coming from. This is key. Some people have money that comes from several places. Um, you may get you know, a B2I check or, um, or, or eventually a B2I check or um, just assistance somewhere. Uh, you may have several jobs, you may get an allowance, there may be var variables for where you're receiving money. And it's really important to find out what those are. We're not looking at a big number. We're talking about where is it coming from and what are the numbers within those places that money is coming from. And then we're going to make adjustments. The average person fails making their budget for three months. It takes three months to make a proper budget. So if you are failing and feel like a failure, you're actually being quite successful because failure um, is because it's not perfect yet, but it's not going to be perfect because we're going to be making adjustments for several months and an ongoing basis. So just know that if it feels like you're failing, you're not, you're actually doing the right thing and you're doing really well. So that's something to, that I want to keep reiterating is that failure is actually um, quite the opposite when it comes to budgets. It's actually a really good thing. So that's what we're gonna be talking about. So to start with, there are three sections to a budget. One is your net income. That's what you bring home each week. I do have a um, presentation on how to read your pay stub and they're gonna use language like that in your pay stub, your gross and your net. So net is what you bring home. So think of it as you're casting out a fishing net and you're bringing in the fish. That's what we're bringing home. Gross is the other one where that's just what you made before taxes. So net is what you're bringing home. Your expenses, um, we need to know your expenses weekly, monthly, annually. Um, annual expenses, people often skip. If you have a car, you have car registration once a year. Um, that's one that people skip. Insurance, sometimes people pay their insurance once a year or only twice a year. They forget to budget for it because it's just one time. Property taxes may not hit um, the clientele for PALS, but um, there are things that just come up annually that we don't think about. And then we're gonna compare those two. So there's gonna be a place where we're gonna compare what your income is and what your expenses are. Your budget might change every week or every month and that's okay. It is okay to make adjustments. It is okay um, to have to start over, but I'm gonna offer you some tools that you don't have to start over with. That makes it a lot easier. And then if you're one of those that is inconsistent income, inconsistent income would be like if you're a server and you mainly bring in income with tips, um, that would be inconsistent income. Or maybe, you know, you get 20 hours a week, but sometimes you can work 40 hours a week. That would be inconsistent income because you really don't know how much you're bringing in. We're going to talk about that briefly, but basically inconsistent income, you want to budget for the lowest amount that you know you will bring home. If you're guaranteed 20 hours a week, budget that. So if you get 40 hours a week, you have extra money. 
So we're only going to budget for the 20 hours a week that you know that you're bringing home. So that's how inconsistent income works. Okay, long-term budgeting timeline. I'm not going to spend too much on this, but in the realm of banking and budgeting, there's this consistent timeline that most financial gurus will agree on. Um, and this never ends. This is from here until the day you pass away, what budgeting looks like for you. Um, one of them should be build an emergency fund. An emergency fund, which we will talk about briefly, um, is right now the first thing you should be saving for is equal to your deductible. So if you have car insurance, how much is your deductible? Ours is $1,000 because it makes my insurance cheaper right now on a monthly basis. So having cash, $1,000. So if I were to get in a car accident today, I would have that $1,000 in cash. Um, some people, it's just simply that $400. That could be their emergency fund. Um, but that's a really good place to start for savings. Your emergency fund should never be considered in your budget. It is extra. So put it in the freezer, put it under your pillow, get another savings account, wherever it's safe, it's accessible, but it's not something that you're going to use all the time because it's not, it's untouchable money until it's an emergency. The next step would be to pay off any debt that you have. And for the clients here with pals, y'all are young enough that you can maybe avoid debt. So let's, you know, paying off debt is one thing, but if we can avoid the debt, and I can definitely help give you direction with that. And pals workers, I can help with that too. Ideas for that. Um, that would be key to never get into debt. So school loans or credit cards, you know, car payments, things like that. But if you do, we're going to get it paid off. Then you want to build up an emergency savings to three to six months of your income or expenses. So that means if something were to happen, you would have three to six months of money saved up to pay for everything. This came in handy when COVID hit because a lot of people didn't have jobs, um, but if they had that savings, they had enough money to get through three to six months of their expenses. This is a long-term thing. This is oftentimes people do not get to this point until well into their careers, their 30s, 40s, 50s. So this is a long time out. Um, the next two would be at this point, you would consult with financial um, professionals for investments, financial matters, and then start saving up for other things like retirement, children's education, things like that. So this is kind of that lifelong timeline of budgeting where we should be at, um, just some goals to hit along the way. All right, so let's get into the nitty gritty of how to budget. So step one, step one, write down all of your income. Anywhere it comes from, write it down. You could have five things, you could have 15 places, you could have one. Wherever you're receiving mon money on a consistent basis, put it down. Again, I you don't wanna see a big number, like I make this much a month. You wanna see, I make this from here, this from here, this from here, this from here. We wanna know where our money is coming from. Part of budgeting is having the knowledge of where it's coming and where it's going. Um, so it's very key to write down all the places that you receive consistent income. And then you're going to write down all of your expenses. This is the hard part. Anywhere you're spending money on a consistent basis, that needs to be written down. Now, I have worksheets. I believe it's on this um, that, I can, that I will send. But it makes this a lot easier. Um, but start writing down where you spend your money. It could be on an electricity bill. It could be diapers. It could be food, eating out, groceries. Um, if you have a pet, you're spending it on pet food or medical bills any debt that you have, any time that you're spending money, you want to write it down. It's very daunting at the beginning because we forget where we spend our money. And sometimes we only do it once a month. So it's not a normal thing that we're thinking about all the time. But that's why you're going to start writing it down now, because it'll probably take about a month to get most of the things written down. And then it's going to take another two months to go in there and change the budget and adapt to things that you're going, oh, I forgot about that. Let's get that in the budget. But you're going to write down all of your sources of income and everywhere that it's going. Step three, did you consider everything? Like I said, you're going to be thinking about this and probably failing for three months. Um, it's okay to fail because it actually means that you're thinking about it and you're fixing things. You're adding things. You're adjusting things. So just know failure is key. Um, nobody, nobody is perfect the first time around. It takes quite a while to get this going. Step four, once you have your income... Once you know that number, all everywhere it's coming from, compare it to how much you're spending, okay? We gotta know what's coming in, what's going out, and if we have enough, that would be the key. 
Um, in conclusion to this, and we're not done, but in conclusion to these steps, any extra dollars that you, you're not spending, so if you're making more than you're spending, any extra dollars should be used for debt or savings. Um, so we're paying our expenses and then we're gonna put extra money on, the, on um, either catching up on bills or paying down bills or paying down debt or just sticking it in savings, which would be really nice. If you don't earn enough money, so if your income is higher than, excuse me, is lower than what you need to pay all of your expenses, that's where we're gonna get into the needs versus wants. We gotta figure out how to at least break even. We gotta know that we're bringing in enough money to spend it. So what does that look like? Well, can we cut back on things? Do we need to take things out of the budget? Do we need to get a better job? Do we need to get a second job? Um, what does that look like? And that's a great thing to be talking to your pal's worker about if you find yourself in that place that you're not making enough money than what you're spending because it's likely you're going into debt to cover. Um, and then I have a ton of ideas to help out with that too. So I'd be a great resource for anybody who needs that. Okay, comparing. Um, this is just really quick. If you make enough money and you're spending the money and you break even every month, that's zero. That's like a zero balance um, budget, which is a great place to be because at least you're not going into debt. If you're positive, that means you make more than you're spending. That's great too, because you have extra money. If it's the other way around though, if you don't make enough compared to what you're spending, that's where we need to make adjustments. And that's gonna be super important for you to do as soon as possible to make those adjustments because we at least wanna break even so that you're not going into debt. So here's some resources. Um, I guess I didn't put those, um, those worksheets and I apologize, I will get those to you. I have a worksheet for all income and then the expenses, I list out tons of expenses. Anything that I could think of, I put them on this expense list. So there might be other expenses that somebody might have and there's room to add on, but um, those worksheets are a really great place to start um, and they're online so you guys can print them off and things like that. But we have some really great budgeting tools that I would suggest using. All of these are free. There's a ton of them out there. I've tried several of them. Um, I'm a big fan of every dollar. So it's a free app, but there is a paid component to this. But the free part is it has all of your income that you can list and you can add lines. So you can have 20 places where you're getting income from, but then it gives you all the places where you're spending money and you can add lines. And then up at the top, it tells you how much you made that month and how much you spent. And there's a place to go in there. And every time you spend money, so say I went to the grocery store and I spent $56.87, I get to put that in. I just plug it in and it subtracts it from my budget that I had set for my groceries. So it makes it really easy. It also repeats every month. So you don't have to go in there and put things back in there every month. It makes it very easy. I'm a fan of every dollar. Mint is also another one of those, does the same thing. Um, it does have a paid component. The paid part, actually, um, you pay the app to plug into your checking account and it actually does the budgeting for you. So it'll identify um, if you went to the gas station or if you went to the grocery store and it'll plug it into the budget. I'm not a big fan of that because I don't think it's necessary. And for people who are trying to save money, you don't need to pay more money for a budgeting tool. So um, you can use all these on the computer. You don't have to use them on an app, but apps are more likely the use where they're being used. And so I would suggest um, if you're gonna use an app, try one or two or three, see which one works the best for you. Um, I'm a fan of every dollar, but I've been using it for a long time. So I know how it is used. Um, I'm not opposed to the other one. Money Compass is through UBT. So if you are a UBT customer, we do offer that for you. So it still is the budgeting tool within our bank, but you don't have to be a UBT customer to use every dollar or mint, or there's one called home. Um, there's several of them out there. So just want to um, let you know that there are really great apps out there for you to use for budgeting. Okay. So that sums up the budgeting piece. Really, you don't have to use the tools that I'm telling you. It's really just listing out your income, listing out your expenses making adaptations to those expenses as they come in or as you think of them, but making sure that you're bringing in enough money to pay for your expenses. So that's the basis of a budget. Um, you can do that on a, 
a sheet of paper or a couple sheets of paper, or you can use an app or the worksheets that I will send out for you guys to use at your leisure. Um, but is there any questions about that before we dive into needs versus wants? A little bit more in depth of what should be on a budget. Any questions from anyone? We've had a couple people that joined a little bit late, which is fine. I don't think it was too late, but okay. Hey, well, I'm, you said yeah. you said the Money Compass one was the one that was uh, affiliated with Union Bank. Yep, yep. So if you're okay. a Union Bank customer, you should be able to access it through your online. Um, yeah, when you log on to your online stuff. Okay, well, let's just dive into needs versus wants. So this is another component of budgeting and doing a good budget. That is understanding what needs to be there versus what you want to be there. And this goes for any, I would say, decision that you're gonna ever make, um, especially financial. Do you need to do it or do you want to do it? And if you can get a handle on that process, that thought process of if I need it or if I want it, it really helps to make sound decisions for a lot of things, not even financially related. But let's talk about what a need is. So if we think about survival, human survival, what does that look like? We really only need four things. We need food, a shelter, a safe place to land, transportation, and utilities. Okay, so food. Food is grocery shopping, not eating out. It's not Starbucks, it's not scooters, it's not going to Taco Bell. It is going to the grocery store and getting what you need to survive. So when we speak of food as a need, we are talking grocery store. We're not thinking everything else. Shelter, shelter could be any, anywhere that you're sleeping as long as you're safe. We need the sound mind of being safe, um, but for some folks, it's living with your parents, it's on your own in an apartment, it's in a house. Um, it could be with some friends, but what does shelter look like for you? It could be paying rent, paying a mortgage, anything in between, okay? Transportation. This does not mean you have to own a car. This just means that you have reliable transportation to get to work and get home. So it could be taking the city bus. Maybe you just take Uber, whatever that means, or you have a car. You're paying off a car. You have a car payment, but transportation is key because we can't get to work without transportation. We can walk though, so maybe transportation isn't necessary for you except for your legs. Um, so transportation could be walking if it is appropriate and gets you where you need to go. And then utilities, we gotta keep the lights on, we gotta keep the AC on in the summer and the heater on in the winter. Uh, we, gotta, we gotta have the water running, so our basic utilities. Utilities do not include cable or internet, okay? It is the basic utilities that keep us alive. So we are talking about when a need arises, very basic survival. Those are the things that should be on your budget as a priority. Though these are the things that need to be there and need to be paid first. So we have to be able to afford these things before we move into the wants. So let's talk about the wants. Anything that's not a need is a want. So concerts or entertainment, going to the movies, hanging out with friends, new pets. Now, if you already have a pet, we got to put them in there. That's, we got to keep them alive too. I get it. But new pets is another conversation. Eating out, that is a want. We do not have to eat out in order to survive. We do need food. So going to the grocery store is really important, but we do not need to eat out. Movies, sporting events, um, anything that cost you a ticket to get in would be a want or new clothes. Now clothes are a part of a want. If you know, we got to have a nice jacket to keep us warm. We do need clothes, but new clothes just for the sake of shopping is not necessary. We do need work clothes. So we may need to budget for work clothes if we have to have a uniform or something like that. But shopping just to shop is just a want. So when we're putting together our budget, our wants, we need to identify what our wants are. So it's really important that once you write down all of your expenses, you go back in and identify what is a need, what is a want. You're going to have two different lists at that point. Your needs need to be a priority. We need to pay for those immediately. We need to get them on the budget, figure out how to pay for those. The wants, 
I'm not saying they can't be there. I'm just saying they're not a priority. So with extra money that we have, this is where we can add in our wants. And so you may look at this list, whatever your want list is, and prioritize that and go, this is necessary if I can afford it versus, you know, something at the bottom where eh, it's okay, I can probably live without it. For me, going out to coffee is really important for me. Um, it keeps me sane to go to Starbucks or Scooters, but it's not a need because I can make coffee at home, but it is on my want list. So once my needs are taken care of, my priority is my want, my coffee. And so I make sure that I can afford to get that on there. But if I can't, what, uh, coffee's out, Scooters is out. So that's how we look at our needs and wants. When it comes to budgeting, needs should always take priority over wants. I've said that a couple of times. But when budgeting, it's important to list your needs first, your wants second. Um, if your budget includes a lot of wants, you cut back on the spending. Maybe you're not bringing in enough money to pay for everything on your list, but maybe we can cut back how much we're spending on your list. So if you're spending a lot on coffee um, or eating out with friends or you go to the movies a lot if they're open. Um, maybe you just cut back on how much you do that so that you can afford it. So there is a way to get our wants. It's just not priority. We may have to cut back on the spending or wait a little longer um, or just strive to make more money so that we can add all of our wants to the list. So I have this in a like PDF that I can also spend is just a needs versus a want so that we can help decipher which one goes where. So as you can see on the needs list, essential clothing, like I said, we do need clothing. We need jackets. We need cool clothes in the summer. That's fine. Um, but shopping just to shop is a want. Um, we do need car insurance or health insurance. We need gas for our transportation. If you're one of those with a car. Um, if you have debt, that is a need that needs to be paid every month. Car maintenance, saving for car maintenance is called proactive budgeting, where we're saving up for what could be coming. Um, that's another lesson um, for another day, but it's something that we want to put on our budget so we're saving ahead of time for something. And then our want, like I said, Hulu, Netflix, or cable those are all wants. They're not necessary. Vacations, gifts, if you're a gift giver, um, you may have to cut back on that because it's not a need. We don't have to do that. Um, a phone, I always put that in the, the need side, but a new phone is a want. So I know we always want the latest and greatest, but we might have to put that off for a little while. Um, how can I still get my wants? So I mentioned this before. We can still get our wants and it's really important. I, I'm a big advocate for you getting what you want because if we take out everything that we want and we're only living off what we need, we get tired of doing that. And eventually we just go get what we want and we spend the money that maybe we don't have or we're taking it out of our needs budget. So if we could figure out to get some of our wants in there, we're just happier people and we'll actually probably stick to the budget a lot more. So there's ways to get your wants. Ask yourself a couple questions. Do I have money for it in my budget? If you do, stick them in there. Get them in there. Go get yourself a cup of, cup of coffee or a new pair of shoes. If you can afford it, do it. Or if you just like saving, you know, just go ahead and save. But can I buy it cheaper elsewhere? Um, there's what's called the 24-hour rule. If you're buying something bigger, um, for me and my husband, it's over $100 is what we consider big spending. If we wait 24 hours to think about it, oftentimes you will either find it elsewhere cheaper or you'll find that you maybe don't need it or you'll just find that maybe you can wait. Like right now in the month of October, um, a, lot of, a lot of times it's a good time to not buy big items because Black Friday is coming up in November. And so a lot of those things go on major super sale. Um, right after Thanksgiving. And so a lot of people don't spend a whole lot of money in October. They wait until November. So if we could wait to put it off um, until we can get it cheaper, that's another way to get your want and save some money also on the side. If I wait, will it become less expensive? There's a lot of, if you look into some of your favorite stores, the way they do their sales is actually really handy. Like 
Hobby Lobby, for instance, everything will go on sale at least once a month. So for instance, all of their pictures and wall stuff, anything that hangs on a wall, it goes through a cycle. So at least one week per month, it will be 50% off. Their lamps go 50% off at least one week a month. So if you can hit the sale time, then it's going to be cheaper. Every store has that process, Target, Walmart, things like that. So if you can figure out their cycles, then it will be less expensive at another time. Um, another question to ask yourself is, can I live without this? So on your want list, is it something that you need? No, it's on the want list. Can you live without it? Do you really need it? Do I have to go to the movies tonight with my friends? Well, I don't really want to see it, the movie. So yeah, you could probably live without it. So asking yourself these questions can get you wants on your list, but also get some things off the list that maybe you just find, I, I could just completely live without this and be okay, and then save some money in the meantime. So when it comes to your budget, so let's just say you've made your budget at this point and you're referencing back what's on my needs list and what's on my wants list. Um, do that. Prioritize each of those lists. Evaluate your, your list of needs and wants. Decide if it really needs to be there. If it doesn't, get it off. But maybe you could just decrease how much you're spending there. Um, what can you eliminate from your wants list? Oftentimes it's not about elimination. It's just about maybe not having those wants all the time, not getting those wants all the time. Can your needs list be decreased? So if there are things that are on our needs list that maybe you can spend less on. So grocery store budgeting, which we're going to get there. Maybe you can save a lot more money at the grocery store, which allows you to eat out like at a fast food joint or going out to a restaurant with friends. And then how can you make your wants list more practical and less expensive? So I, I worked with a guy for financial coaching. So I helped him make his budget and figure out what was best for him in his budget. But he had very limited income, but he insisted that every payday he needed to spend at least a hundred dollars on a new pair of shoes. This guy told me that at one point he had like 500 pairs of shoes. Um, that was his thing, but he didn't make enough to afford a hundred dollars twice a month. So what I talked to him about was, can we maybe do this once a month instead of twice a month? Or can you drop your shoe price to maybe $50 instead of $100 to save money? So there's conversations that were being had about how can he still get what he wants, but maybe on a lesser scale. So we can still do that. So we can still get it, um, but we're just not spending as much money on that or waiting until it goes on sale something like that. He ended up just saying, I'm just going to get more hours at work so that I can afford this. That was kind of his bottom line because that's what he wanted. He wanted new shoes. Um, his, his 500 pairs he had to leave behind um, somewhere. And so he was trying to build back up to the 500 pair. That was his priority. Um, but he sacrificed a lot to get that every month, which was, that was a lot for me to take because it seems like that's not necessary. You can't, you can't wear 500 pairs of shoes but he wanted them. So any questions on needs versus want? Maybe you even have an idea of, you know, this is on my list. I don't know if it's a need or want. Feel free to ask. Anybody have any, any questions about that? Uh, Amy had a good one. Uh, tattoos and piercings mm. as a want. As a want. It's definitely a want. Can you survive without it? That's how you know if it's a need or a want. So um, I have a 19-year-old. I adopted him when he was 17. He is 19 now. And he asked me when he was 17 if he could get a tattoo. And I said no um, because he was still underage. But I said, when you're an adult, when you're 19, you get to make that decision. And he decided that he could afford it because he was working full-time. And so he decided that he was going to get a tattoo when he was 19. Um, did he need it? Nope, because he lived two years without it. Um, from the time that he asked to the time that he got it, it was two years. Um, did he want it? Yeah, pretty bad. Um, but he figured out a way to afford it before he did it. Um, piercings, same thing. Um, 
I only have piercings in my ears and I'm still alive because I didn't get piercings elsewhere. So if you don't have any piercings or you have one or two and you want more, you're still alive without it. So it's going to be okay. So that's definitely a want. Um, so then you have to figure out how can I afford this? Um, am I give, am I sacrificing any of my needs to get this? And if you are, maybe it's not the right time for it. So you can still get it, but you need to be responsible with where you're getting your funds to do that. Hope that answers the question. <laughs> I just have something I wanted to input on this yeah. subject real quick. Um, so I am 17 and I decided to get a piercing on my lip uh, when I was 15. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that I've noticed is we have to be really cautious on what we decide to do and where we get it because that can also um, stop us from being able to get the resources we need to afford our yes. needs and or wants. So I work in a nursing home right now. We wear face coverings, but in the future, mm -hmm. I'm not going to be able to have this face piercing. Yes. So that's just something to keep in consideration when you're going for body transforming things. I appreciate that you just said that so much because it is so true. Um, my son got his tattoo right here on his arm below his elbow, like where it bends. And we did not know he got it until he got it. And we told him, you are now decreasing your opportunities to get jobs um, if you are not able to cover it up. Because some jobs, even in restaurants, will not allow you to show your tattoos. You either have to wear makeup or long sleeves, um, things like that. The piercings, they won't allow you to wear it. So um, just know that when you put things on your body, it may look fantastic. And nobody's, nobody's saying it doesn't. But you're limiting your um, availability for other jobs. Because they are allowed to tell you that you cannot wear it if you want to be employed there. So just consider that, especially when it comes to like the tattoos where you can't just take it off like an earring. Um, might want to consider putting it somewhere where it could be hidden if that's, if that's what you're going to do. So thank you so much for adding in um, that little piece of advice. I do appreciate it. Okay, let's jump into cro grocery store savings. So we talked that Food is a necessity. We have to have food to survive, but we don't have to go to Taco Bell to survive. We have to go to the grocery store. Um, so how do we save a little bit of money at the grocery store? Um, first of all, uh, I'm going to stop saying Lincoln. Nebraska has several grocery store chains that are all very mixed priced. Um, and so like for us in Lincoln, I would say Hy-Vee is like our expensive grocery store where Walmart and Target tend to be a lot more inexpensive or super saver or something like that. So there's plenty of um, grocery stores that have variable prices. One may just be easier for you to get to than the other. So what I would encourage you to do when it comes to grocery stores is learn their sales. Um, I've put on here sales days for, for the grocery stores that are here. So every Sunday, Target changes their sales. Hy-Vee is various days. Um, it tends to be Tuesday or Wednesday the most often, but they do change their sales up quite often. Um, Super Saver, they change them on Wednesdays. Walmart is Sundays and Fresh Time is Wednesday also. So that covers the Lincoln um, grocery stores for the most part. Um, if you're in Omaha, I know there's Baker's and there's some other ones. I don't know what those sales changes are, but you can look online for those. It's really important to know the sales dates because if you're looking for something to go on sale, just go the day like Sundays for Target or Walmart because you know that they're going to change things up. Uh, but you can also just call or ask the, um, a clerk at the grocery store when you're there. Um, when do you change your sales? So um, if you get the mail or if you look at a newspaper or look online or on their apps, you'll see their new sales stuff. So you, you'll be able to look it up. But it's really important to know that because if, say, on Saturday you go to Walmart and you get a lot of your groceries, but you know that maybe meat is going to go on sale on Sunday and then just hold off and go back the next day. Um, so that's one way to save money is just know when their sales are changing. <clears throat> I couldn't tell you at each store how their sales work, you know, if it's dairy or meat or chips or um, 
different uh, companies do different sales. So like if you look at Coca-Cola products versus Pepsi products, they usually have sales on different weeks. Um, those are mandated by the company, not the store. So you just have to be a little bit more um, picky, I believe, when it comes to sales. But just knowing when they shift is, is a really good way to save some money. Another way is to buy generic food. Okay, so the generic would be the Walmart brand, the Target brand, uh, the Hy-Vee brand. So they all have their own brands. They're not necessarily called Target brand. I think Target is good and gather. Walmart is, uh, I forget what their, theirs is, but um, there are generic brands of just about everything out there from toilet paper to Ziploc bags to cheese. Everything's got a, got a generic brand. Um, some people are very partial to the actual brand. So craft cheese versus Walmart cheese. But one of the things you should do is look at the label and see how different it is. Um, because most of the time when you have a generic brand, they change one or two things of the ingredients. And oftentimes it's just the color. Um, so Though it may seem different, it's really not that different. I'm thinking about bags of like tortilla chips. Um, there's a huge price difference between a, um, a brand name tortilla chip and a Walmart tortilla, tortilla chip, but the color just may be the difference. And so it's going to save you a dollar or two when you buy those things just to look at the label. Taste. Now, some people believe there's major taste differences in a lot of generic brands, and that may be the case, but try it. Try generic brands to see if there is a taste difference because there, if there's not, there's definitely a price difference. So you'll be saving money. Um, and it may be that that one generic brand that you don't like, you can buy that in the regular brand and not get the generic, but everything else you're getting generic. So you can kind of splurge on that, on that good brand. I have here the generic brand versus craft macaroni and cheese. Um, and I looked at this and there's not a huge difference here. So these are the two brand names. Um, I forget which store brand I was looking at. It was either Walmart or Hy-Vee that I looked at their brand um, just to see what the differences were. And this is what I came up with. Um, there's a vitamin B1, vitamin B2, and then some seasonings and the color. And that's really the only difference. Um, and at the end of the day, it's not a big difference that's gonna change the taste. Um, so that's a good way to start is what are they putting in each of these types? So Kraft Macaroni versus a generic brand. If you think about it, there's a ton of generic brands because we have all these grocery stores. So maybe one tastes better than the other, but trying them out can significantly change how much you're spending on things like even macaroni and cheese. My next slide here, I actually did a price comparison of the same product, but I went generics versus name brand. Um, and so again, I believe I did Walmart or Hy-Vee for the price points on these. Um, so if you did all generic for the same amount of products, you would spend $38.08. But if you did name brand, you'd be spending $50.73. So it's a savings of $12.65, which that completely adds up. And these are just basic things that most people have in their refrigerator or their pantry. So I wasn't going for anything significant. I was going for just basics. Um, one thing with shopping generic is um, you can, if you're saving money on generics, you can buy things, more things like meat and veggies and fresh fruit and veggies, because those you don't get generics for, you get what they have. And so if you could save a little money on the name brands and just shop generic, you can get more of the fresh fruits and meats um, that may be a little more costly, um, which I'll tell you one thing, when it comes to meat, Walmart is definitely the cheapest. Um, just a little fun fact there. Hy-Vee often has really good deals with meat, but it's not all of it. It's like one thing at a time. But um, with having two kids and a hungry husband, I've just found that meat is cheaper at Walmart. So just fun fact of the day for you. So generics, very key, but look at the color, look at the taste, look at the ingredients. And if it's okay by you, you know, if it, if it doesn't taste bad, it's probably worth just getting the generic anyway. 
Um, things like cheese and milk, um, there's standards on what has to be put into those in order for them to be sold. So they're really not different. Um, maybe the color is different, but a lot of foods when it comes to fresh um, meats and cheeses and, and dairy products, they have to hit a certain standard um, mandated by the FDA. And so you're, you're not going to get a different product. It just has a different label on it. So um, I'm thinking of like Target or Walmart cheese versus Kraft versus Tillamook, which is a type of cheese. So you're going to have maybe um, that Tillamook might have something more fancy in it, but it's like three times the price. So um, again, they have to hit a certain standard in order to be sold. So you're not getting much of a difference. Yogurt is the same way. It has to hit a certain standard. So when it comes to those dairy products, generic, it really doesn't have much difference to it. All right, so moving on here. Um, and some other ways to save some money at the grocery store, use store apps um, on your phone. Sometimes just getting them scanned works. Store club cards. So like Hy-Vee has their club card, which you could just put your phone number in for that and you save on gas, but you also save within the store. So um, if you have the club card, things might be, um, you know, cheaper if you just scan your card. Target has their circle app. Um, it's an app on your phone that if you scan the product that you're buying, it may give you a coupon that you wouldn't have otherwise. So as you're putting it into your cart, just scan it, put it in your cart, and then you scan the app. The cashier does. Um, Hy-Vee's club card, you earn points towards free gas, which is really nice. Um, not all gas stations use the Hy-Vee club card for a discount, but if you have one close to you, you'll likely find a gas station that does use it. I know they're all over town. And then Sunday morning newspapers, which I know are a thing of a past. What is a newspaper? But they often have the manufacturer coupons, which means Kraft or Coca-Cola or Pepsi will put out coupons for their products. So you can also use those in a, any store, um, even if you have another coupon for the store. So manufacturer coupons are an extra way of saving money. Um, there's a show on, I think it's TLC or something. It's the, it's about extreme couponers. I don't know if it still runs, but it's fascinating. If you ever want to learn how to coupon and get like a ton of free things, um, that's a great way to learn. So I would, um, suggest watching a, an episode or two, if you're like really gung ho about getting free food, um, it will definitely save you some money. I used to do it when I lived in Denver. Um, we used to do extreme couponing and I would, I would get like $300 worth of groceries for like $30 because I would do the coupons and the store coupons and club cards and stuff. It was crazy, but I always had a lot of like shampoos and soaps and things like that stocked up because I did extreme couponing, which was really fun, but a lot of work. All right. So does anybody have any questions about grocery store budgeting needs versus wants, or just how to budget for the sake of time? I couldn't, go into the worksheets. So I apologize. I would, I would bring those up, but just for the sake of time, I couldn't. I don't have any questions, but I do have something I'd like to add on to this as sure. well. Um, so one thing that I learned um, because of my biological family was that there is a lot of medicine that you have to pay half coverage on. Mm -hmm. And a lot of places like Russ's and I can't think of the name of it, <laughs> but there are several places like Walmart and stuff like that, that you can scan a card and you can get uh, points towards other items in the store. Yeah. Um, so that's also another way of like saving money or getting money towards other things. Um, like you said, couponing is yep. a good thing. And I know we were talking about brand name stuff. Mm hmm. Um, and I just want to say like that goes beyond just food. Like mm -hmm. it could be brand name jeans and brand name, you know, just stuff like that. And yeah. it's all stuff that we don't need, but it's more of a want. Yeah. That's, that's a great point to add in. This goes beyond food. It could go for clothes. And, um, so if we need it, then maybe the generic brand is what we need to buy. Um, versus if we want it, maybe that's what we're saving up to buy the brand name for or something like that. But I'm thinking Walmart, when you go and you get the choice between, 
Charmin toilet paper and the the store brand. Like, do we have to have Charmin? No, we just need something. And then I'm thinking over like in the pillow section and their sheets, like you can get the fancy stuff or you can just get a, some sheets and it's going to cost you way less. So there's ways to definitely um, within store brand versus generic versus name brand, you know, keep it, keep it simple for yourself. Um, for the medicine, there's an app called good RX looks like this. It's yellow. Um, put that up there. Good RX. Um, whenever you're paying for a medicine, go to good RX and scan it or put it in because those are manufacturer coupons from the supplier and it will, it will almost always give you a coupon. So even if you have medical insurance, but you have to pay something for your medicine, sometimes it's just $15, you may be able to get it for free. And that's for any store, any store will take good RX. So that's a pretty well known app to use for cheaper medicine. Um, so thanks for bringing that one up. I appreciate it. Any other questions, comments, concerns? Appreciate your input. Um, one of the other things for getting some of your wants too is sign up for store emails because they'll send you coupons. So I'm just looking at my, my store apps here and I have like famous footwear um, and I get emails or alerts on my apps when things are buy one, get one half off, or they're doing a sale. So that's another way of getting some more wants on your list, but maybe you just do it cheaper. So I have a bunch of, I actually have a whole folder on my phone of all my stores and restaurants of apps that before I go in, I'll check my email to see if I got any discount codes or if the apps have any um, discounts. So when I drive up, I park, and then I just look at the apps that I have. Um, so that's a quick way, even, I mean, I even have Panera bread and scooters on here just to see if there's anything that I could, I could get for free when I go in there. So that's another way of saving some money and getting some more of the wants on your list is just get the store, um, apps or their, on their email chain, which I get all those thrown in junk. And then I just go through them when I need to, cause that's, I have a lot that come through and it can get it really annoying, but you can put those in junk. So all right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send off all of these PDF worksheets to Sarah if she'll pass them on as you need them. But one of the things that I do for free, always for free, is I'm a financial coach. And what that means is I help people start budgets, work with their budget, um, find community resources. So say you don't make enough money to pay for all of your expenses. Well, are there resources out there that can help you pay some of your bills? or help you with groceries where you can cut back on um, your expenses. So that's one of the things I do at UBT. You do not need to be a UBT customer to use me. Um, it's not just a one-time thing. We can talk on the phone or have some Zoom sessions as you need them, um, but it's always free. And I'm not a salesperson, so I will never try to make you sign up for anything UBT. I don't even know how to do it. I've never been in banking. So this is literally what I do for the bank, but I'm not in banking. So I'm never gonna sell, try to sell you anything, but I can work with, you pals workers, I can work with you guys. I can work with your clients. We could do this all together. I'm happy to do that. Um, my job is just to be a li liaison between the financial world and the rest of the world. So resources out there. And I have a ton of them when it comes to supplementing things in our budget so that we don't have to pay for them so that we could use money elsewhere. So, and I have a ton of other um, presentations if you have questions about pretty much anything financial I know I'm going to be doing a couple more of these in the upcoming weeks for you guys. So hopefully that will help. Um, but ask Amy, she sat through so many of these with me. Um, I have a large array of topics. So if you guys have any questions along the way, feel free to just reach out to me. Um, if you just have questions about anything, I'll get you connected with the right person. Um, if I can't answer the question. So that's for anybody, even if you're just a client of, of pals, um, even if you are 17, feel free to ask me. I'm happy to help where I can. So I do appreciate your guys' time. I will um, get this on YouTube and get this sent out to you also. Um, but if there's no other questions, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. I just want to say a quick no. thank you for you um, <laughs> joining us on the Zoom call. I know yeah. you probably had other things to do today. So thank nope, you. this is what I do for a living. I love it. So. <laughs> This is what I'm doing today. <laughs> well, we'll still give credit where it's due, Caitlin. Thank you so much for yeah. taking the time to, to meet with us today. Yeah, I'm happy to do it. Thanks for having me.